We often think of animals as adorable, interesting, and amazing. They live in our homes, we obsess over them as kids, and if you ask someone, animals exist outside of morality. While animals can be amazing, it's important to remember that some animals are not cute and fuzzy. Sometimes they are very dangerous, and other times they develop an unquenchable taste for human blood. My name is Brianne, and I'm the host and creator of Among the Dirt and Trees, a show where we explore true crime cases that occur out in nature. In today's two-part episode, we're going to step beyond the basic and boring topic of human serial killers and instead learn about some animals who, throughout their lifetimes, found that they preferred hunting humans to anything else. Yes, today's episodes will cover animal serial killers, Animals that committed such violent attacks against so many people that their stories have terrified the masses for ages. This is part one. Today is a pretty big day, at least if you like celebrating. If you follow the show on social media and saw the cancellation message, you know that this episode is the hundredth case slash episode of Among the Dirt and Trees. Kind of, at least. If you count the two-part episodes as one, which I do because they follow specific focuses, this is episode 100. And if that's not your thing, it's the 100th case. Or rather, cases. I was foolish enough to think that I could fit this information into a single episode, but while I was working on it, it became clear that I grossly underestimated how many animals have killed literal hordes of people. So, that's why the episode ended up being pushed back. There was too much to fit into one episode. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that animals can't technically be serial killers, and you might be right, but I don't know if that's really all that true when you look at it. Sure, we don't scoop up these animals and drag them through the courts, but we do blame them for their perceived crimes, and a lot of the time, we kill them for their actions. The animals in these episodes were not animals protecting their domain or simply acting on a quick instinct. Let's learn more about these dangerous predators. Since we normally talk about crimes that happen in forests, it seems only fitting that we begin our discussions with bears. A brown bear in particular that traumatized the masses in Japan. Now, most of us know that bears aren't really something you want to mess with. Even in Colorado, where we have black bears that most people relate to skittish dogs, you don't really want to mess with them. And... Brown bears are a very different story. An adult Usuri brown bear can be up to 9 feet tall and weigh 1,300 pounds. These fearsome predators are known for a terrifying bite, which they aim at the neck and the backs of unsuspecting prey, presumably while said prey is fleeing for their lives. Of course, you won't find your local bear pumping iron in the gym, but that doesn't mean that they aren't absolutely jacked. A swipe from a brown bear's paw can shatter your spine upon impact. In 1914, a brown bear that would come to be known as Kesagake awoke from hibernation ready to feast. This famous bear hunted down and killed a minimum of seven people over the course of six days. And to this day, it is still considered the worst animal attack in Japan. Descriptions of the scene of his attack said that it looked like a slaughterhouse with blood everywhere. Eventually, the bear was hunted, and this is where they found that the bear had actually stored one of its victims, a local settler named Mayu, and actually stashed Mayu's body in the snow to preserve it. 
So if you're one of those people who think that animals aren't smart, I have some very bad news for you. The hunters were unable to kill the bear at that time, and it managed to flee. Unfortunately, it came back, and it was still hungry. This time, the bear broke into a house where a woman was hiding with her children. When the hunters arrived, they were so afraid of the bear and could hear it inside of the house, which made them want to burn the home to the ground, but they chose not to for fear that anyone might still actually be alive inside. After this, the bear escaped again, and word spread, leading them to find that the bear had actually killed others previously. But... This bear disappeared, and when the hunters tried to find it, there was no trace. Desperate to lure him back, they decided to use one of the corpses of his victims, hoping it would attract the bear's attention. This hunt went on for several days until, finally, a sniper managed to shoot Kesagake through the heart. When they found him, he weighed in at over 700 pounds and was just under 9 feet tall. Now, I don't know about you, but I've always had a fond place in my heart for tigers. They're beautiful, sleek, and dangerous. And this is probably a little sexist, but I often see them as distinctly feminine in this way. Female tigers can grow to be nearly 6 feet tall, and they can weigh up to 400 pounds if they're well-fed enough. The next killer in our story is a famous tigress from India and Nepal known as the Champawat tiger. This terrifying feline killed an astonishing 436 people during her reign of terror, and she was so well-known and feared that people were well aware of her methods of attack. She would prowl through the area, terrorizing nearby people in the late 1800s. This tigress was known to stalk local workers and people who lived anywhere near her jungle. She would often slink out of the jungle and immediately leap on one person, dragging them away kicking and screaming if they were still conscious at all. The people were so frightened of this murderous feline that they would cower, tucked away in their homes any time that she came by, hoping to avoid being one of her victims. In a daring instance, she unleashed herself upon a couple of sisters, snatching one of them up and dragging her away into her jungle territory. Though it was common and here accepted to abandon the victims because of how fearsome the tigress was, the girl's sister refused to leave her sister behind and chased after the tiger, hoping to sacrifice herself instead. Unfortunately, her plan didn't work. The tiger chased her into a nearby village, leading her straight to other people. She and others from the village managed to stay safe, but the same could not be said for her fallen sister. The tigress had already mauled her so severely that she was dead. Hearing of the trouble in Nepal, famed hunter Jim Corbett arrived on the scene to find a village of people that were cowering in terror. With a deep understanding of wildcats, Corbett was well known as the ultimate hunter. He traveled the world, writing his tales as he hunted countless predators that were responsible for killing upwards of 1,200 people in total. When he arrived, the tiger had just snatched up yet another teenage girl, and Corbett was able to surprise the tiger while she ate her prey. Unfortunately, it almost got him eaten. Fortunately, he managed to kill the tigress in the end. It was at this time where Corbett did what he always did. You might expect that this man lived for big game hunting, but that wasn't actually true. He helped people with animals that were killing large amounts of their population, but he was actually really sympathetic and an activist for these animals as well. He fought for the conservation of tigers in his lifetime, and he always looked for a reason why these predators were acting the way that they did. With this tiger, the reasoning was clear as soon as he walked up to her. Her two primary canines were broken, clearly the effects of being shot at. 
This left her unable to tear through the tough hide and bone of her natural prey, so she started killing humans instead because they were softer and easier to kill when you're in pain. As murderous as she was, her actions really were done out of survival. This terrifying tigress was only one of the dangerous predators Corbett killed to save countless lives, but... If you want to hear about more man-eaters, woman-eaters, and eaters of everyone in between, you'll have to head over to part two. Thanks, guys. <laughs>